Hello, and I'd like to welcome you to Howard College Summer 2 2016. This class is Police Systems and Practices, CRIJ 2328. It is an accredited course uh, that is accepted in all colleges and universities across the country. Um, this class is a summer class, which means it's 31 days long, and I am responsible. In order to make sure that this class stays accredited, I am responsible for teaching you everything that is in a normal long semester. Uh, within the next 31 days. So what you're going to see um, in this Blackboard learning environment are a bunch of tabs. There's 16 tabs on uh, the left side of the screen as you're looking at it. And inside each tab, there are three folders. And the first folder is the resources. It's going to tell you everything that you need to know about that particular lesson. The second folder is a discussion. The third folder is your assignments. It's going to include a quiz and another assignment. Uh, these are going to pop up due every other day. Classes start on July 11th. The first assignment is July 12th. As I'm recording this video for Police Systems and Practices, uh, it's not yet the 12th of July. I'm posting it on YouTube. Therefore, a lot of people are going to have an opportunity to uh, see this video even before the class starts. So if you're interested in taking police systems and practices um, There's a link below to howardcollege.edu. You can enroll in the class and Get it set up and ready to go um, Again classes start on July 11th and your first assignments are due July 12th and then they'll be every other day finals for this class will be in August uh, August 11th, so it's actually 30, yeah, 31 days. Um, so you're also going to see in in this video and in this in this class, you're going to see a series of videos like this one. They're going to be recorded from across Texas uh, at Howard College in my in my house in my yard, um, like this one is filmed in my yard, um, and other places they're going to be filmed and they're going to be 15 minute lecturettes they're going to be nutshell lectures that will do my very best to give a brief summary of the of the entire lesson within 15 or 20 minutes or so uh, police systems is as i'm recording this uh, police systems and practices is something that's extremely important to us because of the terrorist activity. As I'm recording this right now in Germany, there is a terrorist attack in progress, much like the one that was in Paris last October. Uh, a gunman is in a theater. He has already shot at least 50 people, again, at the time of recording this. He's already shot at least 50 people, and NBC is not covering it. Uh, the Ellen DeGeneres show is on, and the news is not, the, the only news that I have uh, is not covering this. Um, I'm sure CNN and Fox and a lot of the cable channels are covering this terrorist attack, but the major networks are not. ABC, NBC, CBS uh, are not covering this terrorist attack that is occurring in Germany as we speak. As Americans, as police officers, it is our job to not prevent crime. Well, yes, our job is to prevent crime, but the Supreme Court uh, recently has ruled that law enforcement officers have absolutely no obligation to protect us. Their primary goal, their primary job, is to restore order after an event. So after something happens, the police department shows up. Okay, so what this class is about is teaching you how to deal with situations. We're going to talk about the history and development of policing, of course. Um, we're going to talk about how policing got to where it is today uh, from all the way back in Roman days where the Roman uh, soldiers uh, protected the city of Rome and the other cities, how in the medieval times, the police force was the knights and the knights that worked for the lords. Uh, and then it moved to the sheriff or the sheriff, 
um, and we're going to talk about the evolution of, of policing. We're going to talk about some different theories in policing that you may or may not agree with because we are a theory-centered world. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of police officers that watch this video because of police systems and practices. And I'm going to be talking about, throughout this class, I'm going to be talking about community-oriented policing and problem-oriented policing and Sarah projects and how to go about trying to reduce crime because that's the other object of policing. We want to prevent crime. We want to be proactive in our policing so that communities are safe to where we don't have to worry about standing in your front yard and getting shot. Um, we're we're going to talk about citydata.com. We're going to talk about comparing crime rates and crime levels from one city to the next. And we're going to discuss how to address those situations. Me personally, I believe in community-oriented policing, and maybe that's because I'm an academic and I've never been a cop. Okay, my background is in corrections. My background is as a federal prison guard for a private prison called Corrections Corporation of America, and then I moved into state probation, where I was, I was a probation officer for the state of Texas. So I have never actually been a police officer, but so everything that we talk about in this is going to lack actual experience and it's going to be primarily on academia and theory and things to that nature i i i really 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 believe in community-oriented policing and i believe that if we can figure out a way to decrease the animosity or the mistrust between police officers and the public, we can turn around and make a much better society. We can make a society that is peaceful to where there is no crime. You know, I know there's no such thing as a perfect utopia. Um, and Augustus Comte, or Comte, or however you want to pronounce his name, suggested that crime is acceptable. It is something that we need to show a healthy community because crime is a way and disorder is a is a way to let society and the ruling classes uh, the government know about the ills of society okay and in big spring we've got a big time property theft problem okay so what's that got to do with poverty has it got to do with drugs and we do have a big drug problem here in town as well um and so as a police department, as a police agency, as a law enforcement agency, it is our job to try and find out ways to address this problem. It's our job and it's our, our intention to create programs and plans to make a better society. How do we as a police department address the drug problem? How do we address the prostitution problem? How do we address murder? How do we address all of these other issues and entities that we find within police systems and practices? We're going to talk about patrol. We're going to talk about detectives. We're going to talk about all of the things that we do as cops, as police officers. Okay. This class is 31 days long. It's going to be a very busy class. It's going to be an active class. There's going to be discussions every single day, although I'm not going to close the discussions. They're good. Your discussion is going to be due every other day. And in the discussions, what I expect you to do is give an original post to answer the question. Okay. I need you to cite your sources. Now, this is going to be following APA rules, the American Psychological Association uh, writing rules. So you have to cite your sources both with parenthetical in-text citations and with a reference page at the end of your discussion. Okay, then you are also required to respond to at least one of your classmates. Uh, and after you respond to one of your classmates, you have to reply to anybody who has responded to you. I will do my very best to respond to all of you. So all of you are going to need to reply to me. And this is an intention, and it is intended to uh, simulate the in-class, face-to-face discussions that we have in class. 
Okay. And because it's only 31 days, we're going to leave these discussions open so that we can continue this discussion and we can, dis we can continue our thoughts and ideas upon the different theories and the aspects and the practices uh, that we're going to be discussing in class. Um, in the assignments, there's going to be a 10-question quiz. Uh, you can take this 10-question quiz four times. The highest grade that you make will go into the grade book. The exams, there's a midterm exam and a final exam, and the questions from these exams will come directly from the quizzes. Um, there are no proctored exams in this class. Uh, there is no requirement or need to come to Howard College. You can take this course uh, from anywhere on the planet if you want to. If you are enrolled in Howard College, and of course you paid the fees to get in, um, and you paid the tuition for the class, you're more than welcome to take this class. Um, my goal is to promote critical thinking. My goal is to teach you how to think, not what to think. Uh, I will ask you questions and you can respond to those questions. Uh, I'll give facts, um, but I'm not going to try and sway you to my political leaning or my religious leanings or any of those types of things. My job as a professor, as an instructor of criminal justice, is to teach you how to think and where to find the information. It's up to you to interpret the trees. It's up to you to interpret the information that you're given uh, and come to a logical um, idea. So I'm excited about this class. I'm excited about this semester. Uh, if you know anybody that wants to take this class, uh, get them signed up. Uh, it should be a fun, interesting class. And with that in mind, I do want to thank you for attending uh, and for listening to my video. Make sure you hit the like button if you, if you enjoyed it. And have a very, very, very good day. Thank you.